Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali, speaking to you from the Muslim Media Hub. This Ramadan, we're dealing with 30 keys to unlocking the meaning of the Quran. Today, we're dealing with key number 18, and that is avoiding uh, violent interpretations of the Quran. So what do I mean by that? We go to the classical commentaries and we see that certain verses of the Quran were identified as uh, being uh, verses that, uh, according to the interpreters, uh, would indicate that Muslims have to enact violence against uh, non-Muslims. But they had good intentions and they understood the world from their point of view. However, we need to take that uh, to the next level by understanding the world in which we live in, the changes, the dynamism, and uh, the way in which uh, Muslims and non-Muslims have come to live together in peace and harmony. Mostly, we see that there are pockets in the world uh, in which violence continues. But we want to now ask, what did God say in the Quran? Did God uh, instruct us to be uh, violent towards other people or to live with uh, other people in peace and harmony? We look at the Quran and we see that uh, the, the Quran showed the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, for the 13 years of his mission in Mecca, and he did not uh, take up uh, the sword against his enemies. He and his enemies were being persecuted, but he bore the persecution with patience, and God enjoined upon him patience and his uh, followers, uh, on his followers, patience. Then the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, migrated to Medina, 400 kilometers to, to the north approximately, and uh, there he established a polity. And now, uh, because he was, in addition to being a prophet of God, he was also now the political leader. He had to, as other political leaders would have the responsibility, to protect his uh, people. And so when the non-Muslims came marching against him uh, and his people in one army after another, that is when God gave permission for the Muslims to defend themselves. So one of the Medinan verses uh, in Surah 22, verses number 39 and 40, uh, give the permission for Muslims uh, to fight back. Permission is given to uh, those who have been fought against uh, because they have been uh, oppressed. Those who have been expelled from their homes without justification. Except that they said, Our Lord is uh, Allah. If God had it not been for the fact that God uses some people to drive back the oppressors, uh, then the churches, the synagogues, the monasteries, and the masajid, the mosques in which the name of Allah is being recited, much would have been demolished. So you see there's a justification for going into war here uh, to defend oneself, to defend one's faith, uh, to defend uh, the synagogues, the churches, the mosques, and uh, the monasteries, and so on, so that the name of God can continue to be uh, uh, memorialized in all of these uh, places of uh, worship. The freedom of religion here is obviously guaranteed and Muslims are being told that they are to protect uh, their own faith community and also the faith communities of the other uh, religions. And had it not been like this, then the oppressors would have the, the you know free hand to do whatever they want with the people of uh, faith. So now permission was given to the, the Muslims to defend themselves. But the Quran is very clear about this, that uh, Muslims have to be fair in their uh, battles and they not, are not to transgress limits. Uh, in the uh, second chapter of the Quran, the 190th uh, verse, the Quran says, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Fight in the way of God against those who are fighting against you, but uh, do not transgress limits uh, or do not be aggressors. Uh, certainly God does not like those who transgress limits or those who are aggressors. We need to understand the Quran, as we pointed out in a previous key, in the light of each other. The Quran is not meant to be a violent book and it's not to be interpreted uh, with a violent uh, sort of taint in the background, but rather uh, we should interpret the Quran and understand it fairly in a non-violent manner because so much of the Quran tells us to live in peace and in harmony with all people. For example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, the same second chapter of the Quran, husna, speak kindly to people. And if you speak to speak kindly to people, then even more than that, you're not to do anything that would be harmful uh, to people. And yet, uh, we see that due to circumstances that prevailed in the ancient world, 
uh, Muslims have arrived at some violent interpretations of certain verses. So, for example, Surah 9, verse number 5 says uh, that, uh, you know, when the uh, sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them. Some people just taking this phrase out of context will say, okay, this is the sword verse and this directs the Muslims to go all out and, uh, you know, kill off the enemy. But what they're doing there is that uh, they are not seeing the Quran uh, at verse by verse in the passages within uh, they occur and within the wider context of the rest of the Quranic uh, narrative and of course in the context of history all of these are keys that we have looked at before but uh, the key we want to focus in now while drawing all the other keys together is that uh, we, we should not arrive at a violent interpretation of the Quran because the Quran on the whole is teaching us uh, a peaceful Outlook. So what's happening with this Surah 9 verse number 5, which uh, the classical uh, commentators have uh, referred to as the uh, verse of the sword? Well, we see at the beginning of this Surah that uh, the Quran is addressing those pockets of resistance after the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him had taken over Mecca and uh, rededicated the house of worship for the worship of the one true God as it was from the time of Abraham. There are pockets of resistance trying to ambush the Muslims and slay the Muslims wherever they found the Muslims. And therefore, in uh, uh, response to that, the Quran is saying, look, if you do not stop uh, your shenanigans, then uh, be on the lookout now because Muslims are going to have uh, the permission from God uh, to, to launch an offensive. Of course, a justified one because of your aggressions. But of course, if you uh, de desist from your wrongdoing, the Quran is very clear. From Surah Al-Baqarah, you mentioned previously in the verse number 190. Now we go to 193. God says, Fa'in in tahawfa in the law of Rahim. And if they uh, should desist, then God is uh, forgiving and uh, merciful. Even in Surah 9, it says that uh, after this verse number 5, which some people think uh, should is, is uh, it's an all-out call for Muslims to enact violence against non-Muslims, that misunderstanding of theirs is uh, corrected in verse number 6. If people would just pay attention to the very next uh, verse, it says that uh, if, uh, if one of the polytheists uh, should should seek refuge with you, then grant him the refuge so that he can hear the word of God. Then uh, transport that person to a place where the person will be safe. The Quran here is showing us that even the polytheists who were at war with the Muslims, if, if it so happens that one of them in particular uh, were to seek refuge with the Muslim as with the Muslim community, then that polytheist should be granted refuge so that that person will hear the uh, word of God. And then in the end, if that person doesn't want to embrace the word of God and doesn't want to be part of the Muslim community, then they will be free to leave. But not only just free to leave, but it will be the Muslim obligation to transport that person to a place where the person might would be safe. Because if you let him go just simply uh, like this, then he might be treated as a traitor by his own people and his people might kill him. That's how the uh, things worked in the ancient world and of course in the Middle Ages. So uh, the uh, Muslims were being told to take care of this person even though he lived around the Muslims for a while and he doesn't want to be part of the Muslim faith in the end. Uh, he's going away with a message that says basically, yeah, I was there, been there, done that. I listened to the Muslims reciting their book to me, but I'm not convinced. I just uh, don't want to be a Muslim. So we, we let not only let that person leave, but also transport that person to a place where the person will be safe. In short, the Quran is not a violent book and should not be interpreted in a violent manner. But when we take the verses of the Quran all together, when we see the, the page within which a particular verse is written and read all of the verses that come before and after it. When we read the Quran in the context of his its historical situation, then we understand that it's not a violent book and we should stay away from violent interpretations uh, of the Quran. So that was uh, our uh, key number 18 for unlocking the meanings of the Quran. Join me tomorrow when we will deal with key number 19 for unlocking the meanings uh, of the Quran. Ramadan Mubarak from the Muslim Media Hub. This Ramadan, we're making history together. Behind me is the building you helped us purchase for the sake of Allah for the establishment of the Muslim Media Hub. Uh, we've started filming our television program here called Let the Quran Speak, and we're training the youth to produce other such shows and videos for social media uh, so that we can present the message of Islam to the wider world. Uh, this Ramadan, you can help us to raise $100,000 for the sake of Allah 
uh, please go to our website, muslimmediahub.com. May Allah bless you and all of your loved ones this Ramadan and forever. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali, saying assalamu alaikum, peace be with you, and Ramadan Mubarak.